What's the worst Christmas movie ever made? I've got one. Let's get started. Hi, my name's Kevin Marr, and I watch a lot of movies. We're looking for one of your Santa Clauses. There's only one Santa Claus. Santa Claus Conquers the Martians is a 1964 movie, also known by the name Santa Claus vs. the Martians, because I guess they didn't want to give away the ending, right? Something is happening to the children of Mars. On Mars, the children are unhappy and they watch TV, they get Earth TV, they see Santa Claus on TV, and they wish they had something like that on Mars. So the Martian leader decides, we will kidnap Santa Claus, bring him to Mars, make the children happy, and hilarity ensues. Santa Claus, you're coming with us. There's a lot of things that I think are good in this movie. The robot's entrance is awesome. They've got space phasers that were clearly made out of toilet plungers. The name of the spaceship they travel in is Spaceship Number One. Prepare Spaceship Number One. There's just like a consistent aesthetic to the bad movie that like uniformly the performances are really lousy, the colors are gaudy, the costumes and sets are really cheap. The movie is good in its consistency. It, it, all, it all comes together. They all really complement each other. We have to get Santa ourselves. Come on, Volda. There are people who've never seen this movie and they call it bad. I dare them to watch the scene where the giant robot kidnaps Santa Claus. It's amazing. You can't come in here. No one's allowed. Where? Where did you come from? Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of terrible things about the movie, too. Uh, exposition. Really heavy on its exposition. Bad exposition. Non-stop exposition. Who are you? We're from Mars. If you fall asleep during the movie and wake up, there's always dialogue that tells you what's happening. Father, we're in the toy shop. Droppo isn't here. And there's something wrong with the toy machine, too. The filmmakers think the, the audience isn't that bright. They're going to kidnap Santa Claus. And us, too. This is one of those movies that introduced the classic conflict, will Santa be able to deliver presents on Christmas? He's going to be kidnapped. That's like the highest stakes there is. The world might not have Christmas. These are high dramatic stakes. The performances are not what you would call award-winning, because at the time they didn't have awards for, like, worst actor. We have a weapon that's much more potent than that. As you may know, we are holding Santa Claus a hostage. One false move, and your little ho-ho-ho man will be destroyed. <laughs> if you're a kid watching this in 1964, there's, there's a dramatic death scene that is going to be traumatic. It's, it's an explosion. There's nothing gentle about it. A guy blows up at the end of his life. He delivers his wisdom. They must learn what it means to have fun. Boom. That's it. Very, very terrible for young viewers. The movie is hypnotic. It just draws you in with its just weirdness and its badness. And the scene where they, they conquer the villain at the end, it just goes off the rails. You're going to relax. Permanently. <laughs> and you kind of can't believe you're watching it. Like, you can't believe it was made. Kids' entertainment in the 1960s is very different from today. You didn't have parents who would go to the movies with their kids. Parents would drop their kids off, give them money for a ticket and popcorn, then they would go to, I don't know, the hair salon or a bar pick their kids up two hours later. They didn't invest in what was on the screen. It's not like a Pixar movie where you gotta put stuff in for the parents who were in the audience and make it tolerable for them. Why would they change math? Math is math. Math is math. This was purely for children. Kimar, I bought some new food pills. I hope the children will eat these. We have hamburger, buttered asparagus, mashed potatoes, and a special treat for them. Chocolate layer cake pills. Up until this point, a lot of UFO movies had like alien invaders conquering Earth, like uh, Earth versus the Flying Saucer, Invasion of Body Snatchers. They're like huge sea pods. Really evil takeover. This is just showing Martians as like people who want to help their children because their children are sad. 
oh, Earth has something that makes their kids happy, we would love that for our children. So it's a very different view of like the enemy, the evil alien enemy. They're not so different from us. That was not being done in science fiction films at the time. When Santa Claus gets kidnapped in the world of the film, the nations come together, put aside their differences, and they say, we need to make children happy. Never in the history of mankind have the nations of the world reacted with such unanimity and cooperation. That's radical for 1964, in the middle of the Cold War. Has a very positive view of, like, we all want the same thing. We want children to be happy. Santa Claus can do that. Santa Claus does do that. Thank you, Santa, for bringing happiness to the children of Mars. And the Christmas spirit to all of us. This is a quote from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. People who have not been in Narnia sometimes think that a thing cannot be good and terrible at the same time. Anybody who's watched Santa Claus Conquers the Martians can tell you that something can be good and terrible at the same time. I don't know what's going on in there, but I'm gonna take care of you myself. Watching movies for me is like Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. They say there's no wrong way to eat it. I think it's the same thing with movies. If you enjoy it, then you're doing it right. And if it's, people say it's a bad movie and you enjoy it, just go for it, enjoy it, you know? The holidays themselves can be good and terrible at the same time. Just take it all in, appreciate the good intentions, and just have a good holiday. Merry Christmas, everyone!